trade deadline is less than a month away, and the Tampa Bay Lightning are in the thick of the fight for the Atlantic Division. But what are they going to do come trade deadline? Adam Danker is here to talk about that and all things Lightning next on the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked On NHL Podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. It's my pleasure to welcome back to the show, the host of Locked On Lightning, Adam Danker. Adam, it's been a while. I wanted to ask you first a little bit about the, I guess, the defense of of the Lightning this year, not quite being as elite as it has been in recent years. What what is the reason for that in your mind? Well, the the, the reason for that is it's it's two things. It's the the loss of, of... Ryan McDonough. I mean, we all know how much of an anchor he was on the back end for the Lightning for so many years. The Lightning, unfortunately, had to part ways with him in the offseason because of salary constrictions, trading him away to Nashville. And the other side of that, too, is Gil, is that Victor Hedman, that's been the talk all season, uh, had an upper body, lower lower, lower body. Does it doesn't matter what kind of part of the body you think the injury <laughs> is because – you know, I, I believe he sustained an injury to his leg that game, and then they said it was actually an upper body. And so, you know, one one could even can debate what part of his body is even ailing him at this point. But really, he hasn't looked like himself this year. A lot of the plays that we see Victor Hedman make, especially on those back end chase downs on the breakaway, he just hasn't been getting to his spots in, in a timely manner in a way where. The, the other defensemen on the ice with him or just the other personnel on the ice could kind of put their heads down and say to themselves, well, hedy has got this one, so we don't have to worry back. Well, this year it's a little bit of a different story. I will say, though, that the shining spot uh, in, in this year's defensive core has been Nick Pervix. He's really done a phenomenal job in his brief stint. A lot of people thought Pervix was just going to be a fill-in as Zach Bogosian was coming back from surgery to start the season well nick pervix has really fought his way and solidified his spot on the first line with victor Hedman. so alongside with him as well as you know eric turnack you know it, it's not exactly your ideal situation in terms of how this defensive core is playing but you know you also have to look at the shining spots here and there uh as the lightning continue to to try and find their way uh in i i guess this very strange off season that uh I, and I say offseason because the Lightning aren't as uh, solid on the defensive end. But, yeah, uh, still trying to find their way and uh, trying to get into that defensive, you know, groove as the playoffs near. Yeah, I mean, that being said, they're still top 10 in the league in goals again. So if this is bad, where are we really going? But, you know, right now the the Bolts are a few points behind the Lightning, but they have some games in hand. How important would it be to get second place in this division if you're going to face Toronto in the opening round of the playoffs? I mean, it really doesn't matter, uh, Gil. We all know home home ice doesn't really matter in in this day and age in in the NHL. Um, you know, all all we're all we're doing right now is preparing for for Toronto. You know, whether or not we get the games to begin enough to, to begin the series or not, it really doesn't matter to me i don't think it really matters to anybody in the lightning fan base or on this team obviously you want to finish the season out on a high note so that's really what we're looking at right now uh john cooper is just going to play uh he's going to play his team regularly if every game was the last game of the season and it was a playoff game so he's just working on trying to get this team ready for the playoffs trying to Stretch out Vasilevsky, but at the same time, not wear him out, kind of like what we saw at the the end of last season. So, you know, 
is home ice is second place a big deal at the end of the year yeah it's something you could hang your hat on but it's not really something anybody's worried about i mean once you get in you get in and and then that's when you worry about those games you don't worry about it now so yeah i mean second place would be great i would love to get second place after chasing down uh the leafs all year but at the same time i mean at the end of the at the end of the day it doesn't really matter to me so you're talking about preparing for the playoffs preparing probably for toronto as your opponent what is this team going to look to add at the trade deadline which is now about a month away well really the lightning are going to look to add the same piece as we always see them add at the deadline and that's grit sandpaper someone that could do a little bit of everything now, Gil, we all know about, you know, some of the names that have been floating around and and uh, ideally if the salary cap wasn't a thing, and I'm sure everybody starts their their free or their, their trade deadline wish list conversation the same way, uh, you would love to get Patrick Kane or you would love to have gotten Bo Harvett, Bo, who, by the way, congratulations on, on your guys getting him. Uh, you know, there's some of the other names out there you would love to get. Like I was saying to you before, Vladimir Tarasenko would fit in perfectly on this third line here uh, in Tampa Bay. But you're you're looking, though, with the salary cap constrictions and, and, and just the lack of assets, you're kind of looking a little lower, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, oftentimes we see uh, lower end assets or mid-level assets that the Lightning bring in often shine right away. Case in point, Nick Paul last year. I don't think a lot of people knew who Nick Paul was uh, heading into the trade deadline. So, you know, that's the one aspect you got to look at it is that, you know, if you don't know him and he's setting the world on fire, then you're going to know that the the Lightning front office knocked it out of the park. So we're looking at kind of some names. Uh, Ivan Barbashev from, from St. Louis. Uh, that's a good name and and a little bit possibly of a reunion in the works uh, with with possibly Luke Shen from Vancouver coming back home uh, for a reunion with the Lightning. And what do you think that I mean, Tampa Bay has a history of bringing in the right guy at the deadline and getting healthy at the deadline in order to to really play their best in the playoffs. What do you think is left in the system to give up at this point? That's a good question, Gil. I mean, that's a question I've been asking myself over the couple last couple of weeks as I've I've spoken about what can the Lightning technically give up to where a it's not going to cost them a whole ton, and, and b you know it's not going to set them back. I mean, it's no secret that the Lightning have not really exactly had lucrative looking draft picks uh, over the last couple of years, whether it be selections or even where they're placed in the draft. So. You know, and, and I'm sure that's something a team, uh, whoever is conversing with them about negotiating players, is is thinking about. You know, are we going to give up this guy? Yeah. Do we have any, really any intention of bringing this guy back or whatever the case or the situation that might be revolving around that player? But at the same time, do we want to get a 32 second overall pick back? Do we want to get a 31st overall pick back? Now, they don't have to worry about that because the Lightning don't have a first overall pick until... 2025 so we have we have time for that but i mean that's really what the lightning have to ask themselves how sexy does any of our assets look at this point in time and really they don't have a whole lot i mean they have some forwards in the in the minors up in syracuse that you know are going to be very solid third line forwards in the future as they continue continue to develop but no one really noteworthy as well as alongside like i said lackluster looking draft pick uh, selection so you know, really, it's up to Julian Breeze boss, the Lightning GM, to really have to get creative uh, with with his negotiation tactics. And hopefully, you know, a team will be able and want to buy in uh, to that deal or any prospective deal. Well, we'll certainly keep an eye on it. I know you will on your show. Why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the show and where they could find you on social media? You can find the show on social media at LO underscore lightning on Instagram, locked on underscore lightning on Twitter. You can find us on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at Danky Dank, D E N K Y D A N K. Uh, comment on any of our videos. Let me know or ask a question. You know, who do you, who do you want the lightning to go after? Who do I think the lightning should go after? Ideally, Patrick Kane. If, if the Blackhawks could somehow retain all his salary, that'd be perfect. But, you know, one could wish, right? <laughs> Adam, always a pleasure. Thanks for stopping by.
Thanks for having me on. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download the FanDuel app now so you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on, one word. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 